Okay, today in RevTune School, I'm going to show you a quick way how to tune your car. My Kiwi's running a bit rich, and a good example of that is the exhaust is shooting black fuel over the floor. Also, on the back of the car, if you look, it's a lot of fuel build up on the paint. So, it's all black on the back of the car, so it's another fine example that's running rich. And I'm going to pull a plug out and we'll have a look. Okay, so let's pull the plug out and we'll check it. Okay, got the plug out. Yep, and as you can see, let's put it in the light. So see how black the plug is? So that's cylinder two. I'll just try cylinder one plug and have a look. So this is cylinder one. So I'm gonna adjust the jets. And what I'm gonna do, you can adjust them on the car. Take the fuel bowl out on the car and adjust them, but I'm going to adjust it by pulling the carby off the car. Okay, so I've taken the carby off now. Now I'm going to take the air filter off just so I can see inside. And then I'm going to split the fuel line, go into the bowls, so I can take the bowls off. When you do take the fuel bowl off, of course heaps of fuel is going to pour out. So it's a good idea to put like a contain underneath so you don't make a mess. As soon as you're undoing the housing, this fuel starts pouring out. So especially when you do this on the car because it makes a big mess. That's why I like pulling it off, it's just easier. You, oh, see the fuel? Yeah, if you're pulling it out in the car, just pull a bolt out and put a container. Primary fuel bowl off the carby. And inside you can see, see there's the float. And this adjust on top of the carby, that's the float level. And that's done by the side screw here. So usually when it's idling, you adjust the float level so the fuel is pretty much on the bottom of the thread. It just starts to dribble out a little bit. And that's how you set float level on the on the holly. And then you can see inside my carby here. So there's my two jets. Let's pull it out and see what I've got. So I've unscrewed my jets. You can use a jet screwdriver. Or I'm using a big flat blade. But if you use a big flat blade, just be careful you don't damage it. So this just screw out like a bolt. And as you can see, there's a number on the jet. 80. Now these should be equal. These should be the same, which it, which it is. As you can see in there, so they're both 80s. If you look at my jet kit, this is the jet kit I've got. So average usually from 64 to 99. So most people run 80s in like a secondary. So let's pull the secondaries out and see what I've got in my secondaries. And as you see in the tubes, the other two jets are inside the tube. Okay, so you undo the jet inside the tube, which holds this on, and then the jet comes out. So on the secondaries, we got 90s. So I made a decision to myself, I'm going to drop down, so I had 80 and 90, my jet size, I'm actually going to drop down 4. So I'm going to go to 76 and 86. Um, I'm, I was thinking about maybe just dropping down two on the primes. But I'll try 76 and then see what my AFRs are. And worst case, at least it's the front of the carby. So if I have to go up again, two sizes, it's easy to get to where the back one's pretty hard. So that's what I'm going to set it to and then I have to see how to... Adjust the flight levels and see how she goes. Place the jets. And um, now I'm going to put it back together. Okay, so I adjusted my flight levels. The primary was a bit too much, so I adjusted it down a bit. So it's just dribbling out now. Had the fuel just starting to dribble out, which is good. So with my AFRs at idle, a little bit leaner. I had before, I had about 12 and a half at idle. So it's about now 13 and a half, 14, so that's, that's pretty good, I reckon. So I just have to see what it's like under load. So I'm gonna check my timing now. And this is the timing light. And, um, 
this is a real good investment, man, especially on carby cars. Most of your boys now with fuel injection, Rexies, Skylines. Skylines you can still adjust, but they're basically just yeah, control by the computer now. But with the old carby ones, I've got like a two-step and I've got a time and advance module under the dash, an ice ignition module, which I can adjust electronically, but I just got my dizzy set to off. So whatever I set my dizzy at, that's what my timing's at. So now I've played around with the carby mixtures and I just want to recheck the timing. Shouldn't have really moved, but we'll have a look. So what you do with the timing light, you got the, the two leads here. So one goes a positive, the battery, negative. And then this little sucker here, that goes around the coil lead. So usually you put on number one coil lead and that gives you your, your ignition timing mark. And then down the bottom here, you can see you got my little timing gauge, my balancer with the numbers. And the light will flash where the timing is. So let's have a look. So when you're adjusting your timing, best to get your idle speed right first. So you a bit high. Uh, this thing usually idles about 1,100. Because when you put it in gear, it drops a bit. Yeah, it's looking good. So you put the climbing radar around the lead, and then, as you can see, there's the timing. So I set mine about 28 degrees, which looks like it's still good. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to set the timing up a lot more, but I need to wait till I get it on the dyno with knockies. We'll put the knock ears on it so I can hear detonation. It's a bit here, a bit hard to hear detonation on this thing because it's so loud. And once I get the knock ears there, we'll maybe wind it up maybe 34. I don't know. It depends on what, what it does on knock. Because I'm still running run pump fuel. I don't wanna I don't want to detonate it and break a piston. 